I started Pawpaw's Pierogs, uh, I guess about five years ago. My uncle Letty, 18 years, I mean 50 years ago, uh, when I was 60 years old or so, showed me how to make the first uh, uh, pierog that we was making for my dad. My dad's the one that taught me how to hunt. And uh, he's the one that showed me how to make the pierogs. Uh, and he's the one that had the patents. And uh, I started making them with him. And then we started making some wood ones. We used to make plywood ones, but at that time you could get marine plywood 12 and 14 foot long. Nowadays, you can't get marine plywood that long. It can only get an eight foot sheets. And if you'd make one out of plywood, then you got to splice it. So uh, our first fiberglass one I made, I guess about 20 years ago, I made off of the old wooden one. And we still had it until Katrina came and we lost that one. So after Katrina, we had lost all our p -rugs. So then what I did is I made some new uh, uh, plywood ones. And then off the new plywood ones, we end up having those pierogs, and everybody used to see them, and they'd say, well, where did you get them pierogs? Because they were designed a little different than most pierogs you see. They actually had that, what we call like a Delacroix Island design. So people would see them, and you know, we made fiberglass ones, and then after everybody asking us about them, you know, my son started saying, well, we ought to make them to sell. So that's how we started about five years ago with, with Pawpaw's Pierogs actually making fiberglass ones to sell. And since then, it, it's, it's really been catching on pretty good. The biggest difference between our pierogs and most pierogs you see on the market now is if you look at our pierogs, we have what we call a rake in it which means it, it comes up on each end two and a half to three inches. Most pierogs that, that you see that people make a flat bottom. And what happens with a flat bottom pierog, the bow always stays in the water. So when you're trying to paddle it, the bow is cutting one way and you want to go the other way, so you got to push that water. With our pierog, the bow rides out the water. So you can turn it easy. You can, you can actually turn it right around just by moving your paddle because you're not pushing any water. The other thing is if you're in shallow water or going through mud flats, that flat bottom buries in the mud and it'll cause a suction and you can't move it. Our pierogs with that rake on it will slide over it. If you get in, in the mud, you can stand it and push out, rock it back and forth and actually slide across the mud. You take the flat bottom pierog and you can't because the end is stuck in the mud. You can't move it. You actually got to physically just about get out the pierog, pick it up because it, it causes a suction to try to move it. So that's, that's the biggest difference I say between ours because, you know, it's designed by people that was hunters all their lives. We use them for fishing and hunting. We used to have to paddle sometime maybe three, four, five miles to go run traps in a pierog when the tide was low. So you had to have a pierog that you could paddle good and, and can carry a lot of weight in it. Plus nowadays, I mean, you know, we put out a pierog that I feel like is a top quality pierog because it doesn't have a road fiberglass edge. We got a hard plastic vinyl rail that goes around the outside of the pierog that's screwed and pop rivet to the pierog. Our seats are not like a lot of pierogs where they're low to the bottom. Our seats is open underneath the, underneath the seat. So that way, when we hunt, we carry canes with us and we push them underneath the seat so we can move our blind from whatever way we want, depending on the wind, you know, we can, we can pick up and move. And, and it's not hard on your back because the seat's high. Most p rugs is just a solid piece of foam that's sitting down low. You can't put underneath anything underneath it. If you get water in it, it stays in one compartment or the other. And where ours don't, you know, ours you can, you can move it. And it makes it a lot easier on your back when you're paddling.
Well, the thing about our p rugs, our, our p rugs, the new ones that we have now, are 12 inches high in the middle. They're 15 inches high on the ends. So if you buck and win, you got your bow is higher than your, than, than your middle part, which is better because when you're paddling, you don't want it to be too high right here. You want it to be low. You want the bow to be high and the stern to be high so when you paddle, you get a lot of P-Rogs that stay straight sides from one end to the other. And when you sit in them, it looks like the back's almost underwater. And when you're paddling, you're subject to throw a wave over into the back of the P-Rog. So ours is higher. Plus, if you buck and win, like a lot of times we might have to buck win, with the bow being higher like that, it, it doesn't keep the water from coming in the P-Rog. It kind of sprays it away because you're bucking that wind and that wave hits the P-Rog and it just, you know, uh, disperses it so it doesn't come in the P-Rog. Well, uh, my son Scott, I, I bought material last year because I have a lot of people that ask me when I go to these sportsman shows, we, we, we bring the old wooden one that I made and we bring the fiberglass one. And a lot of people started making comments, you don't see any wooden ones anymore like the old one I had. So last year we bought the material and I started to make another uh, one out of cypress. It's got cypress sides and marine plywood bottom because we always used to put the uh, marine plywood on the bottom because it won't split up as much on the bottom as cypress will. So I bought the material last year to start showing him so he could possibly carry on the tradition of, of learning how to make them, you know, and, and keep that going on. To me, you can't duck hunt without a P-Rog, so I gotta make the P-Rog first so I could go duck hunting. This is what our finished product looks like. You can see that our P-Rogs on the bows have 15 inches high on, on, on the bow and the, uh, and the stern. It's got a hard plastic rail that's screwed with stainless steel screws so it won't come out. 
inside the rail, we put this foam, which we, we, we stick in there. This shows you basically what it looks like when it's stuck. That just adds some extra flotation to the rails. Our seats have two inch foam underneath the front and the back seat. You see our back seat is wider than the front seat, which indicates that the back of the P-Rog, because the back of the P-Rog is actually a little wider than the front of the P-Rog. We have, we have three different types of fiberglass in our P-Rogs. A lot of them, they make them with just uh, uh, either chop gun or they make it with, with woven roving. We have, we have chop in ours, then we have 18 ounce woven roving, and in the middle, you can see right here, these seams in the middle, we stiffen the middle with what we call a core mat. So it stiffens the middle when you're walking in it. Our front seat's a little bit narrow, but it'll hold just as much weight as the back seat. But it's just to let you know if it's just one person in the P-Rog, you always sit on the big seat because that's the back. We have these end caps that's special made to fit over our molding, which is pop ribbed so it won't come off. The front is 15 inches high, just like the back. You'll notice that our P-Rugs, if you can see the rake in it, it has, it has a rake where it actually has a little bow in it where the ends come up about two and a half to three inches from the middle, which makes it a lot easier when you paddle on the P-Rug. That's what makes it so easy to paddle because the bar will stay out the water. It's not pushing the water. You can turn it whichever way you want to go. You can control the P-Rug instead of the P-Rug trying to control you. It won't get stuck in the mud. If you're going through shallow water or the mud, you won't get stuck in the mud like a flat bottom P-Rug that'll cause a suction and actually bury in the mud. When you paddle out P-Rugs, you're coming up to the shore. When you hit the shore, it'll kind of ride up. It won't just stick into the mud and get stuck where you can't get out the P-Rog. This is our line of Pawpaw's P-Rogs that we have right now on the market. We have our basic P-Rog green, and then we also have it in a full camo. Our P-Rogs are basically one, one design right now. It's like 13 and a half foot. It's big enough for two people, and it's still a, a good one-man P-Rog. It's what I think is the best all-around P-Rog. You can put a lot of weight in it. You know, we've had as much as 500 pounds on a P-Rog. Our P-Rogs are basically about 25 inches on the bottom, 38 inches across the top, 12 inches on the sides, 15 inches on the ends. They're 13 and a half foot long. We also have what we call buffet P-Rogs that you may see in some of the supermarkets. Which, which they use for displaying some of their uh, seasoning. We use them for crawfish boils, icing up beer, tailgate parties. We have them in a variety of colors. We have a red one here. This is a black one here. 